In today's beginner-friendly watercolor tutorial, I'll share my do's and my don'ts <laughs> as we paint the beautiful anemone flower. Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and on this channel we make art together and it's fun, not scary. I have another sort of do's and don'ts uh, watercolor tutorial for you today. I think it's a good way to teach. It's not about that the first example is so bad. It's just that I make some common mistakes and understanding those mistakes can help you to avoid them and be a better painter, a more confident painter most importantly. So my supplies, I am using the Canson XL watercolor sketch pad. It's really inexpensive. You can get these at Walmart or on Amazon. Good for practicing. I have my Munio set of 48 pan paints, two glasses of clean water, some paper towel for blotting my brush, and then I'll probably do the whole painting with a smaller round paintbrush, something like a number six. And I have a reference material here in the form of the Flower Color Guide. This is such a great book, and I've also linked this in my Amazon shop. So go check it out. You can shop all my favorite supplies if you um, happen to follow me on Instagram. Use the link in my bio, or just check the video description under this video. <laughs> okay, let's get started. So I'm going to take my number six round brush and pick up some of the purple, and we'll start with what not to do painting the beautiful anemone flower. I'm starting with a brush full of paint, which is a good thing, but I'm using my paintbrush almost like a marker or pencil here, and I'm sketching the flower one petal at a time, drawing it, and then taking more paint and filling in my drawing. And what I'm doing here is overworking the paint. I'm running the brush around and around and I'm getting rid or I'm losing any variations in the color and the transparency or the opacity. I'll do the same thing again. I'm using the brush kind of like a pencil, drawing the flower and then filling in, overworking my paints and I'm losing all those little variations and happy accidents. In addition to that, another mistake I've made here is I've started way too dark. I started with the dark purple, and then when it becomes time to work a little wet into wet, you can see me releasing pigment here. The purple's so dark that releasing even a darker purple, it just doesn't add anything. Also, I haven't given it enough time. So that dark purple just bleeds out and completely disappears. We'll talk more about timing in a second. For now, let's pick up some green and we're going to add our stems. Nothing really wrong there. I wiggled the brush a little to give an organic shape. I'm adding the green while the purple is still very wet. So I'm getting like a very large blend of purple and green there. A little bit of a blend of color is nice, but I might have waited a bit longer. And I sort of just drew the leaf in, colored it in, overworked the paint. So same common mistake as I did with the petals. Now I'm doing my wet on dry. So I have waited for this to dry, which is a good thing. And I'm going to build up some detail. You can be much more precise uh, working a wet on dry technique but I haven't blotted my brush. So I have too much paint on the brush and that means I'm not in fully in control of it. And I'm getting these really wide lines. They could be so much finer and more delicate, but instead they're a bit clumsy and thick. As for the stamen at the center of the flower, I'm taking this black brown on the tip of my brush. I haven't blotted, I'm not being that precise. I have too much paint and I'm not in control of it. And those dark purple petals are so dark that there's not enough contrast between the petals and the center of the flower. Okay, that's my first anemone painting done. I have definitely succumbed to some common mistakes it's not the worst painting, it just could be so much better. So let's talk about how we do that. First thing that I really wanna advise you, start light. Take that purple, mix in a little white, mix in more water. Uh, both are great ways to lighten your color. Then we're taking lots of paint in our brush and we are going to paint this anemone flower one petal at a time. We're not sketching it, we're not drawing it. We're taking the brush and we're running the belly of the brush, that large area that holds lots of paint. We're gonna pull it across the page in an organic fluid motion. And then we just use the tip of the brush to kind of refine the shape that we laid down. So do a couple brush strokes you know, one, two, three, 
and then refine it the shape a little and call it a petal. You're done, leave it alone. Allow that color to sit and and uh, absorb into the paper. And as it absorbs, as the paper takes the wet medium, you're gonna get some really wonderful variations in the color and the opacity. That's what makes the watercolor medium so wonderful and so interesting. So painting one petal at a time, fluid movements, leave it alone, do not overwork your paints, and allow that paint to kind of do its thing. Another decision I've made on the second painting that's much more successful than the first is instead of just placing two flowers side by side, like left flower, right flower, I've placed the second just slightly in behind. It's going to make for a much more interesting painting with a little more depth. Now I'm taking my nice sap green here and I am painting the stems and those stems are going to, I'm gonna wiggle the brush a little so they're not too straight and they're a little bit thin in some areas, thick in others. I've also waited for the petals to dry a little, but not too much. So I get a bit of a blend of purple and green. Just a tiny uh, fuzziness of the color is what I like and I'm painting these shaggy leaves, again, in a really fluid motion where I'm just kind of shaking and wiggling the brush. So I'm not drawing the leaf in first. I'm working out the shape based on the motion of my brush. So not drawing, but working out the shape of the leaves by wiggling the brush, pulling it, and using fluid movements to create the shape that I want, whether it's a leaf or a petal. I've got some beautiful blending of green and purple. The flowers are quite light. One is sitting in behind, creating depth. Now I just wanna work a little wet into wet, so I'm taking a darker purple and releasing it into the wet petals. They're very, very lightly wet. They're not puddle wet, they're just lightly wet. So I get some lines that are a bit fuzzy, which is nice, a nice softness that's very organic and perfect for flowers. Now we let those dry. So make sure they're completely dry. Might just take 10 more minutes, not even. Pick up a darker purple. We work from light to dark with watercolors. Make sure to blot your brush so that you're in control of the paint. And we are going to work a little wet on dry, doing these very, very fine, delicate lines, just using the tip of that paintbrush. That's why the round brush is so great. It has a large belly for holding lots of paint, but it has that fine, delicate point for doing these really, really fine lines. And another tip is to pull the brush towards your body. If you find that's a motion that's uh, nicer for you, just put the painting upside down. I find pulling the brush in towards me really works well. And wet on dry, that just means adding wet paint on top of dry paint or dry paper even. It allows you to be really, really precise. The paint isn't going to move and blend the way it does if you're painting on a slightly wet surface or a very wet surface for that matter. And here's another tip. I've got so many today. You don't have to be done with the wet into wet. You can always wet, add more water. Here I'm taking a damp brush and blending out some of those lines. And then because that area is wet, I can take more pigment and release it. And that gives me a nice softness on top of the very precise work that I just did. Because I started so light, I get to add darker purple or a darker green and build this painting up slowly and methodically. What I want these tips to do for you is to make you a more confident painter and more proficient so that you can enjoy the process because that's what this is all about. The mindful process of painting these flowers and having a bit of fun, a little bit of artistic me time. Okay, we're gonna add the stamen to our anemones. So I'm taking a bit of Van Dyke Brown mixed with a little bit of violet, nice dark rich purple. And I'm going to try to capture the look of the stamen uh, by simply doing a bit of dotting right at the center of the flower, a little cluster of dots. And then I go around and I do a big wheel or big circle of little dots and lines. So another thing you'll notice about my painting, and that's to, with both examples actually, is that I really don't try to capture the flower in its reality. I try to capture some of the main features. So big floppy petals, a very uh, detailed sort of funny, unique stamen. I'm not getting super realistic and that's a choice that I make as an artist. 
Now the last thing I'm going to do here on the second example is finish up the painting by giving it even more freedom, an even more interpretive approach. I'm just putting some splashy um, green down and kind of calling it a leaf. I'm doing some splotches and dots of color. That's going to give this whole thing a little more life and liveliness, and it's just fun to do. Uh, you can skip that part if that's not your thing, but I like adding a little bit of a blurry effect. Uh, it's very messy and very, very loose. That is my anemone painting done. We did what not to do. It's still a cute painting, would look great on a little greeting card. And I showed you what I like to do when I approach watercolor floral. So let's talk about this one. What did we do wrong? We started too dark. We overworked our paints. We drew the flowers. We didn't allow the brush motions, the brushwork to create the forms of the flowers and the petals. Uh, we had a little bit of heavy blending on the green and the purple, maybe more so than I would have liked. We placed them side by side, so they just kind of look stiff and not that interesting. And uh, yeah, and we didn't blot our brush. We didn't have nice precise lines like we did on the second example. So it's a little bit juvenile. I don't think it's the worst painting ever. There's just so many opportunities for growth here. And a lot of it is simple, simple, simple things like starting with a really light color, nice light watery purple allows us to build this up slowly and thoughtfully. So you don't feel like the painting is rushing away from you. You can really take your time with it. We also blotted our brush. We worked wet on dry, giving us lots of precision and we took our time and we allowed the motions of our brush to create the forms on the page, giving us these organic, natural looking flowers. And then we got fun and loose at the end, really doing these watery, splotchy, messy leaves. We also placed the second flower in behind and the whole thing comes together to create a holistic painting that is natural and organic, just like the anemone flower itself. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I had a lot of fun with this one and I really hope that you found it helpful. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Come on, just do it. <laughs> and I'll see you soon with a new tutorial.